Hi, hi, hi. Hello, my dear students. Welcome. Welcome to the world of zoology. Myself, Dr. Sai from Zoology Wala. My dear students, my dear future medicos, in the last class, we have seen uh, how the skull is formed based on uh, the so many cranial bones and facial bones. Uh, I have explained hyoid bone, ear ossicles like that. I explained some of the bones of the skull and we have seen even vertebral column also. Am I right? So, as far as vertebrae are concerned, you know, this is the first vertebra. This is the first vertebra and this is called atlas. This is the first vertebra called atlas, which is a ring, ring like vertebra. And see, this is the second vertebra called axis. And atlas joins with the axis to form atlantoaxial joint. So, this is atlantoaxial joint. This is atlantoaxial joint. And this is atlas and this is axis. And why the name was given as an axis and why the name was given as atlas. See, atlas, it bear the entire weight of uh, the cranium as well as skull, brain, facial bones, everything. Okay, so this is weight bearing bone. Atlas is uh, the ring like vertebra. See the transverse process, exactly where I catch this vertebra, this is transverse process. The transverse process is, uh, is not that much developed. You see, this is uh, the skull. I explained, I have shown this skull in the last class also. And one of the large opening present at the base of the skull. I explained this. This is called foramen magnum. On either side of this foramen magnum, two occipital condyles are present. That is the reason why this skull is called dicondylic skull. I will explain why I have taken this atlas into hand along with the skull. First of all, say the skull in case of human beings is called dicondylic skull. Skull in case of uh, human beings is called dicondylic skull. Why it is called dicondylic skull? Imagine this is an assertion and reason why because there is a possibility of having assertion reason question also in the need. So, the skull is called dicondylic skull reason. Two occipital condyles are present O C C I P I T A L. Two occipital condyles are present on either side of, they are present on either side of either side of foramen magnum, F-O-R-A-M-E-N-M-A-G-N-U-M, foramen magnum. See, foramen is nothing but the opening, magna means large. A large opening present at the base of the skull is called foramen magnum, a very important structure for the maintenance of uh, the brain with the spinal cord. You know, it's a very important structure. On either side of foramen magnum, two occipital condyles are present. That is the reason why this skull is called dicondylic skull. Okay, skull is dicondylic. Two occipital condyles are present on either side of skull. If you observe the monocondylic skull, single occipital condyle is present generally seen in birds. So, because of having single occipital condyle, the movement of the skull will be a bit more when compared with the dicondylic skull. In dicondylic skull, the movement is restricted. There is a reason for it. You see this, two occipital condyles, they articulate with uh, the facets present for this atlas. You can see the two facets here. So, atlas articulates with the dicondyles like this, like this, okay. So, here condyloid joint will be formed. That is the reason why you are able to nod the head like this. See this, see this, you understand what I am saying. See, even the skull is also saying, even the skull is also saying that, yes, I am following your class. See this. See the movement, the movement will be like this and this is called S. This is the direction of S. That is the reason why this bone is also called S bone. This is S bone. Atlas is called S bone. Anyhow, you can see one can all here. See this one, where I put the marker, this one. And this is called odontoid canal. Odontoid canal is present. And this is the second vertebra 
called axis and this is axis. The name itself indicates axis, that is a spine. This is called axial spine. And this axis articulates with this odontoid canal, that is the reason why this axis is also called odontoid process. I will write here, atlas is having uh, odontoid, O-D, O-N-T-O-I-D, odontoid canal. What for this, what for that odontoid canal? This is odontoid canal. See, this is original human vertebra, my dear friends. This is original human vertebra. And this is odontoid canal. It articulates with the odontoid process. Odontoid process will be there for the second vertebra called axis. Odontoid process will be there for axis. So, odontoid process articulates with odontoid canal. So, this because of having this odontoid process, odontoid process, see this. So, the movement is possible here. So, this is odontoid process and this is odontoid canal. Say this one. Say this one. See, this first vertebra, this is rotating basing on this so called axial spine. Based on this spine, we are able to rotate, we are able to move this atlas, isn't it? So, you are able to rotate your head, you are able to nod your head like this because of having this axial spine. So, whenever you want to nod your head in this direction, no, 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 no. That movement is possible because of having uh, the spine, okay. So, axis, this is the second vertebra and first vertebra is called atlas. For example, for example, say this. See, my dear friends, this one is uh, and uh, here you can see atlas as well as axis. So, this is the axial spine actually, okay. You can see the axial spine, I will show the axial spine and uh, let me change the color so that you can uh, see a bit clearly. So, this is uh, the axial spine, this is the axial spine and this one is atlas. And these are transverse processes, atlas and axis joint to form atlantoaxial atlanto joint. So, this is the best pair in the skeletal system. This is the best pair, born for each other, okay, made for each other also. They are looking very beautiful for my eyes. See this, atlant's axis combined to form atlantoaxial joint. This joint is also called pivotal joint. What is pivotal joint? P I V O T L. I will explain pivotal joint, which is also called rotataria. We are able to rotate our head, isn't it? We are able to rotate our head comfortably, very happily because of having those gentlemen. So, you have to give respect to each and every one of your bone. Am I right? Each and every one of your bone is very important for giving protection to the human being body. You have to respect your vertebral column. You have to protect your spinal cord, isn't it? Protection of spinal cord is the responsibility of vertebral column and protecting the vertebral column is your responsibility, isn't it? So, you have to maintain erect posture when we are sitting regarding the vertebral column. You have to, your vertebral column should be like this, then only the fluid passes also will be perfect to the brain. Generally, in the classroom, the students will sit, in, sit like this, in the drooping posture. Okay, whenever I am mentioning in the class, the students will become alert and they will sit like this, isn't it? You have to sit like this, then blood supply to different body parts and also to the brain also will be perfect. You have to maintain erect posture. Why? Because I told you in the last class, human beings have amphiplatian vertebrae. I, I mean to say amphiplatian vertebrae. See this, both the sides, on both the sides, the word centrum will be flat, isn't it? On both the sides, the centrum, you see this is flat and this is flat, and this is flat, this is flat. So, on both the sides, the centrum will be flat. That is the reason why you have to protect your spinal cord. You means the vertebrae will protect the spinal cord, and uh, you have to protect the vertebral column. Why? Because you see this, here it is flat, here it is flat, here it is flat, here it is flat. So, in between the intervertebral discs will be maintained. 
So if you are not going to protect your vertebral column, I mean to say, if you are not going to maintain the perfect posture, what happens? There will exert a tremendous pressure over your intervertebral disc. So you have to maintain perfect posture. It shouldn't harm your vertebral column. And this is the spine. This is the neural spine. Whenever you are taking rest over the bed or on the platform, the neural spine will touch the ground and the centrum will be towards your stomach. Okay, I explained this in the last class. That's all about the atlas and axis. And now, my dear friends, let me explain you by just uh, showing uh, the vertebral column. Okay, okay, no problem. If you observe the vertebral column, vertebral column, say this is cervical, I will change the color so that you can see a bit more clearly. Okay, now say this is cervical, thoracic, lumbar, sacral, caudal. Okay, and this region, this is the region actually, and this is the portion, this is cervical, C R V I C L cervical, and this is thoracic, T H O R A C I C, and this one is lumbar, and this one is sacral, and followed by caudal, C A U D A L caudal, which is also called coccygeal, which is also called coccygeal region. See, to have some more clarity, just I maintained some more curvature, somewhat deep curvatures were mentioned by me. Say this is cervical and this is thoracic, this is lumbar. Say this L U M B A R, lumbar, lumbar, okay. See, I am sometimes I am writing with the capital letters, that's why, you know. Okay, cervical, thoracic, lumbar, sacral, and caudal or coccygeal region. These are all the regions of the vertebral column. Say so this one, thoracic, this is cervical flexor or curvature. This is called cervical flexor or curvature. And this is thoracic flexor or curvature. F-L-E-X, flexor or curvature. Lumbar flexor or curvature. Sacral flexor or curvature. Caudal or coccygeal flexor or curvatures. See, cervical flexor, Lumbar flexors, these two flexors are called secondary flexors. These two are called secondary flexors in the vertebral column. That is very important. For example, if you observe the newborn, generally we will show very much interest to catch the newborn, but it is very difficult to handle the newborns, isn't it? Why? Because they can't hold their head properly. Their head will be nodding like this. Don't try. Okay. It is very, very dangerous to handle uh, the newborns uh, without taking proper care. You have to put one hand just below their neck to give support to the neck. Why? Because they can't hold their neck. They can't hold their neck. Why? Because cervical flexor is the flexor which is uh, very much required for holding your head. I mean, even newborn also, the cervical flexor is the flexor which is required for holding of their head. Newborns can't hold their head. Why? Because the cervical flexor was not yet developed. In the newborns, the cervical flexor won't develop so fastly. And even lumbar flexor also. Lumbar flexor is the flexor which is very much essential for the new one or the newborn or infant to sit. So generally, immediately after the birth, you can't make the new one to sit. You can't make the new one to hold his head. How are, how the baby boy can hold his head and how they can sit? It is not possible because these fluxes, cervical fluxer and lumbar fluxers, they were not yet developed in the newborn. That's the reason why they can't hold their head properly and not properly, they can't hold their head and they can't sit also. And these fluxes develop a bit later after birth. Within two to three months, uh, they will develop generally, generally. Okay, cervical fluxer and lumbar fluxers will develop a bit later during a uh, uh, after the birth of baby, that is the reason why they are called secondary curvatures, okay? Secondary curves, whereas curvature, whereas thoracic and sacral, and these are the fluxors or curvatures which develop initially during the birth itself or immediately after the birth, if you observe the vertebral column, thoracic fluxor and sacral fluxors will be there. I have to explain this caudal or coccygeal fluxor, very important. Very important point here I want to tell, but 
you have to wait till evolution. Evolution is an extraordinary topic. There I am going to discuss about this coccyx. What is the importance of this coccyx? Coccyx is nothing but coccygeal vertebrae. I told how many coccygeal vertebrae are present? I told already in the previous session. Four coccygeal vertebrae fused to form one coccyx which is triangular. Like sacrum, coccyx is also triangular one. Anyhow, that is all about the vertebral column. Generally, if you observe the length of vertebral column, in case of males, my dear friends, in case of males, uh, the length of vertebral column will be around 70, 71 centimeters like that. And if you observe the females, 10 centimeters less, uh, the length of vertebral column will be 10 centimeters less. So, based on the bones, uh, by seeing the bones also, we can predict uh, uh, whether the bone belongs to male or female also. And by seeing the bone, we can predict the age also up to a certain extent. I think you might have seen in uh, movies also. The bones which were buried for so much period of time, even if you excavate those bones, if you dig and then take out the bones, by seeing the bones, the forensic department, they can predict the age up to certain extent, it is also possible. So many bones are there, we will discuss gradually, I will explain all those points now and now, this is vertebral column, I explained all the vertebrae, the shapes of vertebrae, types of vertebrae, everything. And finally, the vertebral column function is to give strength to your body, support to your body. It will support, it will protect the spinal cord. It helps in holding your skull region also and for attachment of muscles also. For the attachment of muscles also, vertebral column is very much essential, isn't it? And now, let me explain you about, uh, let me explain you about, uh, the next point called ribs, oh, ribs, 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 okay. How many ribs are present in the human being? My dear friends, 12 pairs of ribs are present in human beings. 12 pairs of ribs are present, it means number is 24. So, in the examination, sometimes they will ask how many ribs are present or they may ask how many pairs of ribs are present. Sometimes, uh, uh, how many pairs of ribs are present in the human skeleton or, uh, okay, human skeletal system. If it is the question in the first option, they will give 12. They ask it regarding the number, how many bones are present. In the first option, they have given 12. Most of the students uh, will pick 12. No, number of pairs, 12 pairs of ribs are present. Number is 24, okay. And then, first, uh, Two, first rib to seventh rib, first rib to seventh rib, they are called true ribs, they are called true ribs, first seven pairs of ribs are called true ribs, do you want to see the rib, do you want to see the rib, okay I will show, so this is the rib, do you want to see the original rib, wait, this is the rib, my dear friend, see this rib, this is a curved slender bar, it is a flat bar, you can see, I think you can feel it. Isn't it? So, flat bar, this is nothing but the rib. This is the rib. This is the rib. Like that, so many ribs are there with me. So, this is another rib. Very good. Okay, like that, number of ribs are there. See, so this is another rib. Number of ribs are waiting for you. Okay. So, these are all the ribs. And let me take you one rib and show you this rib. So, this is the rib. And generally, in case of human beings, bicephalic ribs are present. Double-headed ribs are present. I think you know it. Say this one, this is one head and this is another head. Like that, two heads are present. This is one head and from the neck region, there you can see a bulb-like structure. This is called another rib, another uh, head of the rib. And this is actually called a head. This is a small protuberance which is coming from this neck. And this is called another point of the rib. That is the reason. Because of having this head and because of having this head, the ribs are called bicephalic ribs, okay, double-headed ribs. The ribs uh, in case of mammals, in case of human being, double-headed ribs uh, are present. Double-headed ribs are the ribs with two heads. Another assertion reason you can frame. In human beings, double-headed ribs are present. Assertion, reason. See, uh, you can frame so many questions. We can frame statement model question also. We can frame simple objective also. In human beings, the type of ribs, single-headed, double-headed, like that, simple questions also we can frame. Double-headed ribs, I will tell, assertion reason also I will tell. Double-headed ribs means uh, 
two heads are present. What are those two heads? Capitulum and tuberculum. Two heads are present. Capitulum and this is tuberculum. Two headed rib or double headed rib is present. And this double headed rib, this capitulum and this tuberculum articulates with vertebra on the dorsal side and on the ventral side, this is the ventral side. On ventral side, it articulates with the sternum. Do you want to see the sternum? I will show just a part of the sternum to you, my dear friends. Just I will show a part of the sternum. This is not the entire sternum. This is the middle part of the sternum. So on one side, the rib attaches to the sternum. Wow, beautiful articulation here. What a creature by the supernatural power. See this one. Wow, extraordinary. Amazing articulation. Another made for each other couple. Just now we have seen one made for each other couple. Atlas and Axis. And if you see the if you see the occipital condyles and atlas, that is also a best couple. See how many best couples are there inside the human being body. This is an extraordinary, extraordinary articulation. I think you can see it. Really, I am very much impressed by seeing all this. See, that's a great creation, great construction, great house, great building, great duplex house, great villas are there inside our body. What an articulation here. Amazing, literally amazing. See, this sternum, this is sternum. And the rib on one side, rib on one side, one side means, uh, actually this is uh, towards the vertebrae. But see, just I want to show you the point of articulation, the point of articulation. And this is one other point of articulation. So now, if you want to see the original, original view, how they will appear inside the body. And now I will show, and this is like this, like this. So this is an articulation. On one side, they articulate with uh, vertebra on another side it articulates with the sternum like this articulation will be there this is the articulation one side means one side means on the sternum side on the ventral side see ventral side is always stomach side in case of human beings i am talking about the human beings ventral side is the stomach side and here this is the sternum which is called breast bone okay first seven pairs of ribs are called true ribs because because this is assertion reason why the first seven pairs of ribs are called true ribs? Because, because the first seven pairs of ribs, uh, they directly, they directly attach to sternum, S-T-E-R-N-U-M, sternum. Of course, all ribs uh, on the dorsal side, they articulate with the vertebral column. That is a different issue, thoracic vertebrae. Okay, on the ventral side, they attach to the sternum. All ribs are not going to attach to the sternum. First seven pairs of ribs are going to attach to the sternum. That is the reason why those ribs are called true ribs. As they are attaching on one side to the vertebral column, another side to the sternum. One side means this side. What is this side? Dorsal side. Dorsally to the vertebral column, ventrally to the sternum. That is the reason why these true ribs are also called vertebro. B R O vertebro sternal ribs S T E R N A L vertebro sternal ribs. Why? Because why? Because on one side they are attached to the on the dorsal side they are attached to the vertebrae and on the ventral side they are attached to the sternum. Sternum on the ventral side and vertebrae on the dorsal side. See how many points I have mentioned here. Just see here, my dear friends. Just see here, my dear friends. Let me take a different color now just to mark a bit differently. Now see here my dear friends, how many pairs of ribs are present in human being? 12 pairs of ribs are present. This is one question. Okay. How many ribs are present? 24 ribs are present. In order to make a clear cut differentiation, I am mentioning these two questions. Then first seven pairs of ribs are called true ribs. Another objective question. First seven pairs of ribs are called true ribs. Which of the following can be considered as a true rib in case of human being? First seven pairs of ribs are true ribs. Why? What is the reason for that? Why? Because they are directly attached to the sternum. They are directly attached to the sternum. Of course, with the help of hyaline cartilage. Don't miss it. Why? Because this is the rib. With the help of hyaline cartilage, imagine this is the rib. At the end of which the hyaline cartilage will be there. The end of rib having hyaline cartilage with the help of cartilage they attach to the sternum and true ribs are also called vertebrosternal ribs. All these may be framed in statement model questions also. Which of the following statements are true regarding 
the ribs of human beings. True ribs are also called vertebrosternal ribs. I will write here another reassertion. True ribs, true ribs, also called vertebro, vertebro, sternal ribs. True ribs are also called vertebro sternal ribs. Assertion, reason, reason. This is the reason. Why? Because on one side, on the dorsal side, they attach to the vertebrae, and on the ventral side, they are attached to the sternum. On one side, they are attached to the vertebrae. On other side, they are attached to the sternum. That is the reason why vertebro sternal ribs are called true ribs. Especially, they are attached to the sternum with the help of hyaline cartilage. That is the reason why they are called true ribs. So many other reasons. Some other reasons are also there why they are called true ribs. But this is the reason in the neat mo in the neat point of in the neat model. This is sufficient. Okay. And then I have mentioned here double-headed ribs are present. Why they are called double-headed ribs? You can frame one more assertion reason here. Okay. You can see subject is very important, my dear friends. Making questioning or uh, framing a different models of questions is not important. Subject is important. If you have the subject. You can frame you you can frame uh, one more question on yourself only, isn't it? Subject is very important. Questioning is not important. See, I have framed uh, some assertion reasons also here. You can make statement model question also. Subject is important. Questioning is not important. The how the question will come in the examination. Definitely, you you have to learn it. But subject is first and foremost important thing. What the future medicals should remember, subject is very important. Subject is very important. Hair is very important. Of course, hair style is also important. But hair is important. Then you can groom differently. Okay. I am also going to change my hair style. And now, ribs are double headed ribs are present. Double headed ribs are present. Why they are called double headed ribs? Just now I told two heads are present. One is capitulum, another one is tuberculum. Two articulations capitulum, tuberculum. It will become a bit uh, depth for you. It's not that much required. That's why I'm not putting on the board. But you just remember one thing: capitulum and tuberculum. Capitulum articulates with capitular facet, which is there at the centrum of vertebra. Tuberculum articulates with transverse processes. Near the transverse processes, there will be a facet for the attachment of this tuberculum. And this capitular facet. And tubercular facet, these two facets will be present over the thoracic vertebrae. So, on one side, they attaches to the thoracic vertebrae, and on the front side, they attaches to the sternum. Okay, not that much required for you, it will become a, a bit more depth, it is sufficient. So, first seven pairs of ribs are called true ribs. Now, let us move to the next one. Okay, and uh, now now, I want to show you one important uh, image. See this one. This is uh, the important structure what you have to remember. And it is very easy to remember. And this diagram. You see this diagram. See here. Seven ribs, uh, the first seven pairs of ribs, uh, true ribs, these are called true ribs. Why? Because they are attaching directly to the sternum with the help of hyaline cartilage. And now, if you observe false ribs, I have explained first seven ribs, uh, first seven ribs are called seven pairs of ribs, uh, they are called true ribs. Already I finished it. And now, if you observe eight, nine, ten, see this is the tenth one. This is ninth one and this is eighth one. Eight, nine, ten ribs. Uh, these three pairs of ribs. Eighth one, ninth one, and tenth uh, one. These three pairs of ribs are called false ribs. These are called false ribs. So up to here, this is seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Like this, all these are called true. But eight, nine, ten. They are called false ribs. Why they are called false ribs? You can see the diagram. They are not going to attach directly to the sternum. Eighth, ninth, tenth pair of ribs are not attaching directly, directly to the sternum. They are not attaching directly to the sternum. Instead, instead, they are attached to the cartilage of a seventh rib. You see this one, eight, nine, ten. 
these are hyaline cartilages with the help of hyaline cartilage see this is attaching to the seventh rib cartilage so eighth ninth tenth pairs of ribs are attaching to the cartilage of this guy who is this guy seventh rib eighth ninth tenth pair of ribs are attaching to the cartilages of seventh rib that is the reason that is the reason why these are called false ribs they are not attached directly to the sternum but attached to the hyaline cartilage of seventh rib hyaline cartilage of seventh rib okay they are not attached directly to the sternum they are attached to the hyaline cartilage of seventh rib i will explain the hyaline cartilage fibrous cartilage elastic cartilage and different types of coastal cartilages calcified cartilages in uh, the first year chapter structural organization some of uh, our future medicos asked me to take uh, or to explain the first year chapters also i will explain okay structural organization under that under that structural organization i am going to explain all these cartilages and bones briefly okay hyaline cartilages of seventh rib to this they are attached who are attached to the cartilages of seventh rib 8 9 10 that's the reason why the 8 9 10 ribs are called false ribs and now my dear students you have to understand one more point they are neither attached to the sternum nor to the nor to the cartilage who who you see this 10th after this 11 and 12 you see this 11 and 12 they are neither attached to the sternum nor to the cartilages see these two gentlemen these two are highly they are separated they are enjoying and they have not articulated to the sternum and they have not articulated even with the cartilages of the previous ribs simply they are enjoying simply they are floating like this very happily they are present that is the reason why these two are called floating these two are called f l o a t i n g why these two are called floating ribs okay i will tell but just observe 8 9 10 8 9 10 ribs they are attached to the cartilages of uh, the seventh rib and that is the reason why these are also called vertebro vertebro chondral ribs c h o n d r a l vertebro chondral ribs who are vertebro chondral ribs these 8 9 10 8 9 10 these are also called vertebro chondral ribs why because vertebro all ribs attached to the thoracic vertebrae so vertebro chondrum means cartilage chondrum means cartilage study of cartilage is called chondrology chondrichthys cartilaginous fish osteichthys bony fish if endoskeleton is cartilage cartilaginous fish if endoskeleton is bone bony fish cartilage cartilage is also called grizzle g r i s t l e grizzle so study of cartilage is chondrology chondrum means cartilage chondroitin salts are present in its matrix okay vertebro chondral ribs vertebro chondral ribs are nothing but the ribs which are attached to the vertebrae on the dorsal side and to the cartilage on the ventral side so that's all about 8th 9th and 10th pair of ribs 11th and 12th just now i told they are called floating ribs they are called floating ribs they are neither attached to the sternum nor to the cartilage i mean to say they are they are not attached to the sternum and they are even not attached to the cartilages of previous ribs okay previous ribs that is the reason why these are called floating ribs which are present on here which are present here and generally they are also protecting uh, the kidneys also protecting the kidneys but floating ribs are the ribs which are considered to be 11th and 12th pair of ribs okay and now the rib which is maximum in its length the rib length gradually increases till seventh one and from then onwards uh, their size decreases that is the reason why we are considering the longest rib longest rib will be the seventh one we have to remember it's a very important point concept oriented concept oriented questions may also come in the neat examination so longest rib is the, the seventh rib and then from then onwards the size gradually decreases 
8th, 9th, 10th, 11th, 12th, gradually the size decreases. Okay. And there are some human beings eh, where you can see 13 pairs of ribs are also present. Oh, 13 pairs of ribs are also present. So that is a medically not healthy condition. They will have some sort of discomfort when they are rotating head or turning head. They will get severe neck pain. Some complications will be there. Some complications will be there. Whatever it may be, in some 13 pairs of ribs are present. In some, in some means very rarely 13 pairs of ribs are present. But generally, anatomically perfect healthy man shows 12 pairs of ribs. That's it. And finally, my dear friends, my dear future medicos, you have to remember one more intelligent, very important candidate who is watching us continuously. Who is that intelligent candidate simply watching? See this one. See the sword like structure you are observing here. See the sword like structure. Who is that sword? Sternum. This is S T E R N U M. This is sternum. This is sternum. I will show you the sternum. I will show you the sternum. Just wait. Just wait. I will show one sternum to you. Let me clear this. And uh, I will show you the sternum. Wow, great. See this guy. I have represented only the sternum here. That's it. Okay, see this one, this one. Let me take one and light color. Okay, so this is the sternum. You see, something resembles like the sword. This is the handle of this sword, and this is the stem of this sword, and this is the pointed structure of uh, this sword. This guy is called sternum. There he is the sternum. So here it is clearly visible, isn't it? That's why I have taken light color. Sternum. And what is this one? What is this one? And what is this one? And what is this one? Don't require, but I will tell. It's a flat bone present on. Oh, it is a flat bone present on the ventral side, sternum. This is called manubrium. M a n u b r i u m manubrium. And here you can see sternebrae. S t e r n e b r a e sternebrae. And this is xiphoid process. X i p h o i d. Xiphoid process, P R O C E S S, P R O C E S S, okay? No problem, yeah. Just karo bhai. Xiphoid process. This is Xiphoid process, isn't it? This is the sword. Wow, beautiful. And these are sternebrae. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. Five sternebrae are present, and this is the handle. This is called manubrium, and this is these are sternebrae, and this is xiphoid process, and this is uh, the flat bone. I will write here what is there. It is very good to write here. Something interesting. I want to write over this uh, blue background. Flat bone present on mid uh, ventral region. Mid ventral region. See this. Ribs articulated with this one. First seven pairs of ribs articulates directly with the sternum with the help of hyaline cartilage. Articulate with the sternum means don't forget hyaline cartilage. Flat bone present on the mid ventral side. Let me take another color. So this is present on the ventral region. You have to remember a very important point. It is present on ventral region. This is also called breast bone. Wow. Breast bone. It will give support to your muscles and helpful for the attachment of uh, ribs also. Very important. You know, the sternebrae will fuse uh, depending on the age of person. Just now I told you that by seeing some bones, we can predict the age of the person also. By seeing the fusion of the sternebrae also, we can predict the age up to certain extent. So the sternebrae will fuse. In some persons, they will. it takes so much time actually to fuse. In some persons, uh, early the sternebrae will fuse. Anyhow, manubrium, sternebrae, xiphoid process. Total how many bones are present in the sternum? One sternum, one manubrium, five sternebrae, five plus one, six, uh, plus one xiphoid process, seven. Total seven bones are present, but you should not take the count as seven. 
I told you that if you observe the new one, if you observe the newborn, the number of bones will be almost 300. But as the person is gradually growing, the bones will fuse, resulting in reduction of number. So the seven bones will fuse completely, forming this sternum, excellent structure to give support to the ribs. Present in the thoracic cavity, which is monitoring the environment like this, you know, it's an excellent candidate present in the midventral region. That's all about the sternum, 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 that's all about the sternum. So with this, we are able to complete axial skeleton perfectly. Just now, just now let me recollect very simple aspects which we discussed till now. I explained completely the axial skeleton. So, skull is formed by the cranium which is formed by eight bones and facial region which is formed by 14 elements, 14 plus 8, 22 bones and ear ossicles. How many ear ossicles are there? How many ear ossicles? Six ear ossicles are present, 22 plus 8, 22 plus 6, 28 and one hyoid bone is present, one hyoid, 29. Let me add one more bone also directly, sternum, sternum. I will add one sternum also here, total will become 30. And how many vertebrae are present? How many vertebrae are present? 26 vertebrae are present, the number became 56. Okay. And ribs, how many ribs? Just now we have seen 12 pairs of ribs are present, 24 and number became 80. So these are all the bones present in uh, the axial skeleton. These are all the bones present in axial skeleton. Total number became 80. 80 bones are present in the axial skeleton starting from the cranium, facial region, ear ossicles and this is one hyoid bone, one sternum and uh, vertebrae 26, ribs 24, total 80 bones, axial skeleton is over my dear future medicos and now I am assuring you that maximum, maximum you can uh, answer any question which is going to come in the final need from the axial skeleton. I have to mention you appendicular skeleton and joints also that I am going to explain in next session. That is all about uh, this session my dear friends. We will meet in the next session. Thank you. Signing off. Yours, Juwala Juwala.